let's ditch the half and half for a while. Let's ditch the heavy cream. Let's go a different route. Let's make our own creamer. So this video is all about giving you options to cream your coffee. Okay, ways that are gonna taste delicious, but also have some added health benefit, also have some added performance benefit if you wanna go that route. And if you're following a low carb protocol, might even help you produce a little bit more in the way of ketones. So let's just dive into this. And I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with finding new ways to cream your coffee for different goals. First, I do wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button. And then after you do that, hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. That way you never miss our daily videos because we got them pumping out every single day these days. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is combining ghee with vanilla. Now this is a really interesting way to cream your coffee and most people wouldn't think of ghee as a delicious way to cream coffee. But if you look at a lot of the different keto coffee and fat coffee recipes that are out there, a lot of them do use ghee. But most people focus on using coconut oil or MCT, which is great, I'm all for that. But ghee is unique and I don't wanna throw it aside because it really does work well in coffee. Here's the reason I like ghee in coffee. Okay, first of all, it's a well-rounded taste that for whatever reason seems to cut the acidity, but when it comes down to a health perspective, ghee is a short chain fatty acid. It's high in what is called butyrate or butyric acid. Okay, butyric acid feeds what are called the epithelial cells. They feed the cells that are in our gut. So a short chain fatty acid is a fat that's been broken down so much into its shortest form. The reason that vegetables are so good, the reason that we're supposed to eat fiber is not just because it's roughage, but it gets broken down into short chain fatty acids that ultimately feed the lining of our gut. They feed our cells. Well, butyric acid or butyrate is a short chain fatty acid much like that. I'm not saying that it's gonna replace your vegetables, but when it comes down to feeding the gut, that could be very powerful. Now, if we do take care of those epithelial cells and they survive, we can fight off that potential of a leaky gut a little bit better, where if we have a leaky gut, we have what are called lipopolysaccharides that can leak into the bloodstream, triggering all kinds of different issues. Point is, it tastes tremendous. But here's what you do. You take a couple tablespoons of ghee and you melt it down and you add some of these bad boys in it, okay? This is straight up vanilla bean. I don't recommend you use vanilla extracts. It's a different ball game. Use vanilla bean, but in order to get the flavor of vanilla bean, you have to kind of heat it. So heat the ghee, add the vanilla bean, and then, Put that sucker in the fridge and use that as your creamer day in and day out. So if you wanted to melt down a half a cup of ghee and use a half of a, a stick of vanilla bean and make it really vanilla-y, you could. You could. And then you just would take a scoop of that because it's going to consolidate when it's in the fridge. It's going to solidify. And you add that to your coffee and voila, you whip it up. So we have the butyric acid, but then we have the antioxidants coming from the vanillic acid and from the vanillin that's in vanilla. Why do I want that so much? Well, I love the reactive oxygen species fighting effect of vanilla, specifically when it comes down to the gut. Again, if we can control what is happening inside our body as far as antioxidants go, as far as reactive oxygen species, there's a strong argument that you'll be able to live a higher energy life, right? Because you're not gonna be fighting off free radicals all the time. Anyhow, let's move into the next one. That one's pretty simple. And the next one's gonna be utilizing coconut cream. So you can use coconut milk or coconut cream. All coconut cream is, is just a more consolidated coconut milk. So you just get a regular can of coconut milk, coconut cream, and all we're doing with that is mixing it with a little bit of cacao. You can use cocoa or cacao, but when it comes down to cacao, I think you're going to get a little bit more of a benefit as far as the flavanols go. You see, cacao is high in a specific flavanol known as epicatechin, and that's why I'm a big fan of it. Okay, now it is what is called a myostatin inhibitor. So when it comes down to building more muscle and things like that, there's actually a little bit of research and some evidence that shows that the epicatechin that's in cacao could contribute to building more muscle because it inhibits myostatin. Myostatin is sort of your body's natural, I don't know, governor or limitator on how much muscle you can build. Now, I'm not saying that if you have cacao, you can build an endless amount of muscle, but it's just kind of a nice little benefit to have and you're gonna add it to coffee. But then when it comes down to the coconut cream, I'm not necessarily in it for the MCTs. I mean, don't get me wrong. The medium chain triglycerides that are in coconut cream are pretty awesome, right? You're going to get a huge benefit out of that when it comes down to a quick fuel, when it comes down to ketone production. But I'm a fan of the lauric acid. Let me explain a little bit about lauric acid that people don't always talk about. Okay, so lauric acid is a unique saturated fat, okay? It's a shorter chain saturated fat. And what that means in the world of saturated fats, it absorbs and digests pretty darn quick. But it also shows that since it absorbs and digests pretty quick, that it's going to create fuel faster. Now the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition published a study that showed that lauric acid does metabolize faster 
and ultimately ends up creating fuel quicker. So whether you're doing a ketogenic diet or you're just looking to have a higher fat alternative for your coffee, you're still getting a potential metabolic fuel benefit. Now the other piece that gets kind of down a nerdy route is lauric acid activates something known as PPAR alpha. PPAR alpha is a protein. It's part of the uh, part of our kind of our DNA transcription system. So basically what happens is when PPAR alpha is activated, our body is in essence mimicking almost a fasted state. We're mobilizing more lipids. For example, when you are fasting or when you are on a ketogenic diet, your body does increase its level of PPAR alpha that is activated because this has to do with lipid mobilization. So monolaurin, again, lauric acid turning into monolaurin, triggers more PPAR alpha. Complicated, crazy stuff, but basically all you're doing is you're taking a little bit of coconut cream, taking a little bit of cacao, and it's that simple. Now what I would recommend doing is mixing this up separately before you put it in your coffee because what's going to happen is the cacao, see how it kind of floats to the top? You want to mix this up and probably even whip it up and then make a good amount of it, put it in the fridge and then just add it to your coffee every day because once again, just like with the ghee, when you add the coconut cream in the fridge, it's going to consolidate. It's going to solidify which makes it so it doesn't do this sort of flotation thing. So if you whip it up really good. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can use a powdered creamer. So Laird has this really cool and Laird Superfood Creamer is an awesome brand by the way. They're also a huge supporter of this channel so big thank you to them. But like this is pure coconut milk powder, Aquamin which is calcium that comes from marine algae and then extra virgin coconut oil. So we're still getting the lauric acid effect. So if you want to have something that mixes a little bit easier you may want to use this stuff. They also have a bunch of different flavors. I'll go ahead and I'll put a link down below. They've got a superfood creamer that's mixed with cacao. They've got a superfood creamer that's mixed with turmeric. They've got a chocolate mint one. They've got their unsweetened one. So a whole world of different creamers. Highly, highly, highly recommend them. You can use this stuff in place of coconut cream at any point. So for example, if I wanted to use a tablespoon of this powder, I can mix that into a cup along with some uh, cocoa, cacao. I can mix it up with ginger. I can kind of make my own or you can use any of the ones that they have to offer. So special link down below. Make sure you check them out after you watch this video. We'll talk a little bit more about them and some of the other ones that I do. Next one I want to talk about is utilizing hemp milk. So people don't usually think of hemp as a way to cream your coffee. They're usually looking at almond creamers, usually looking at uh, cashew nut creamers and things like that. I'm not a big fan of using those and here's why. The phytic acid content, especially first thing in the morning, is not really what we want to be doing. Phytic acid is something that chelates minerals and nutrients within the gut. So for example, if you were to have a bunch of almonds or a bunch of almond milk, first thing in the morning, there's a high likelihood that you could be chelating some of the minerals in your body. Now, if you're doing a low carb diet or anything like that, it's not something you want to be having in the equation. You don't want to be chelating the valuable minerals that you need because when you're doing a low carb diet, your kidneys are generally expelling extra water. That means you're expelling extra electrolytes, you're expelling sodium, potassium, things like that. Now, if you have something coming in like almonds in excess, well then you're chelating what little minerals you do absorb which means that you're inhibiting absorption even higher. And the cool thing about the hemp milk is that hemp milk is going to be a complete protein. So in addition to not having the phytic acid, you're also getting complete full spectrum of protein. But let's be real for a minute. You're probably not having coffee creamer to get protein in. But anyhow, if you just mix up a little bit of hemp milk, and this one's going to be what I call a sweet and spicy one. So we're going to add a little bit of cayenne. Now here's the cool thing. Research actually does suggest that cayenne does increase thermogenesis. What that means is indirectly it can elevate your core body temperature which could play a role in your body overall burning fat. Not saying you're magically going to burn fat by adding in cayenne but still pretty compelling evidence even a couple percentage increase in your core body temperature could be pretty darn cool. Additionally it inactivates something called nuclear factor kappa B which is a genetic transcription factor that has to do with inflammation within the body. Again I'm careful not to say that it's going to totally get rid of inflammation or anything like that. But indirectly, if we can modulate inflammation a little bit more, then the body can operate a little bit more efficiently. But here's where it gets a little bit fun. If you combine cayenne with cinnamon, not only do you get an interesting kind of you know, sugar and spice kind of taste, but you actually get an effect that mimics insulin within the body. So what cinnamon contains is something known as methyl hydroxy chalcone polymer. What this does is it mimics insulin. So when the body sees cinnamon coming in, it acts as if there's insulin, which means that the cells open up and take up blood glucose. They take up blood sugar without insulin. So what you have to understand is that insulin triggers the body to be in absorptive phase. Uh, there's sort of this hormonal cascade that occurs when insulin levels are high. When insulin levels are high, our body just wants to store fat and that's never a good thing. But if insulin levels are low, 
but the cells are operating as if there's insulin. That means the glucose that's floating through the bloodstream can come into the cell, lowering our blood sugar, but still giving the cell the fuel that it needs. So therefore, first thing in the morning, it's a great way to potentially bring down your blood sugar and have a nice even keeled reaction throughout the rest of the day. Because one of the reasons that we end up craving food is because we go on this blood sugar roller coaster ride. So that's a great little combination there. So again, we've got cinnamon, we've got some cayenne, we've got the hemp, and then you can add some stevia, you can add some monk fruit to it. And once again, with the hemp, it's not gonna really solidify. So no real need to put this in the fridge if you don't want to. You can just make this as something that's good to go. And again, you can use like a layered creamer again. You can use a powdered creamer to mix with the cinnamon, to mix with the cayenne if you don't want to do it with the hemp. I just thought it was something different that you might want to experiment with. Okay, now the next one that I want to talk about is one that's really fascinating. So same kind of thing again. This one is a little bit more about digestion. If you're someone that wakes up with a little bit of acid reflux or you're someone that wakes up with a little bit of a sour stomach generally, this might be a good one for you. And it's one that I tested out and experimented a little while ago. So again, we're going to use coconut cream cream and this way you can get it when it's in its liquid form if it's at room temperature or if it's a little bit warmer okay and then we're taking once again we're taking a little bit of cacao if you want just a tiny bit here but in this case I'm adding some ginger okay and what's cool is that there's these things called gingerols that are in ginger What's cool about the ginger is that in different studies in cultured cells, now again, full disclaimer, this is in cultured cells, not in an active human body, it's been shown to increase glucose uptake. But if you see that happening in cultured cells, there's a very good likelihood it's going to happen in regular human cells as well. So what that means is that it's gonna allow the utilization of glucose better. So this is great, but additionally, we have an anti-inflammatory effect that happens at the digestive level. So this could be really good just for overall feeling good within your digestive system and having that balance throughout the rest of the day. And then the last piece of this one is going to be adding mint. Okay, there's two different ways that you can do this, okay? You can take coconut cream, coconut milk, whatever, heat it up, add a couple of mint leaves so that the mint oil gets into it and kind of infuses it with mint, or you can actually take little chunks of mint that if you don't really care end up getting in your coffee, then you know, so be it. That's the way that I would do it, where I'd pulverize mint the best that I can. So essentially you have a chocolate ginger mint creamer that tastes really, really good in coffee. And interestingly enough, whenever you add mint to coffee or anything like that, you're also getting that cut of acidity. So if you're normally using a coffee that feels very acidic, then this tastes really good. This is one of my favorite ones to add to cold brew. Cold brew is already smooth and not acidic, but this one also, you don't have to heat it up so much. So you can add it to something cool and it's gonna work really well. And once again, you can use like a superfood creamer, you can use layered. Let me kind of show you what that would look like a little bit more. So in this case, you could just use a little bit of powdered creamer, you could combine it with a little bit of ginger, go ahead and take this guy, and in this case you're just making sort of a powdered creamer, so that stuff's pretty universal for that, that's what makes it kind of fun. So the long and the short of it is, no matter what your situation is, there's always gonna be a little bit of a solution, okay? So in this case, we have the coconut cream and the cacao, which is gonna be good just for a good tasting one. We've got the ghee and the vanilla bean, which is gonna be good for the epithelial cells, be good for the gut, be good for gut inflammation. Then we have the hemp milk one, where we're combining with cinnamon and cayenne, going for that sugar and spice kind of effect, which is good for overall glucose transport. And then lastly, we have the chocolate mint variation, which is good for a little bit more digestive health. But all of these are using some form of healthy fat, okay? Whether it's gonna be coming from the coconut cream, the MC teas, the lauric acid, or coming from the butyric acid that you're getting from the ghee. That's the common theme here. We want to satiate, we want to make sure that the cells are getting the fuel that they need, but we also want to help the body stimulate the production of ketones if you're doing a low carb diet. So all these are different things that you can try. And again, I highly recommend that you check out Laird Superfoods that you can use their powdered creamer, you can use their unsweetened kind, or you can use some of the other ones like their chocolate mint, or their one with turmeric, or they've got one with cacao, a whole world of different flavors. They also have some different coffees that you can check out too. So highly recommend you check them out down in the description below. And as always, keep it locked in here on my channel.